Can you have high ferritin without high iron levels? Today, you'll learn about this common cause of high ferritin and how to fix it. So my name is Dr. Tom Bacrano from the Natural Medicine Clinic in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. And a common thing I see in patients is abnormal ferritin levels. So in this case, we're going to talk about high ferritin and one of the more common causes I see for this is not iron overload, but metabolic syndrome, also known as insulin resistance, prediabetes. This is when you have a combination of, it could be high blood pressure, high cholesterol or triglycerides, excess belly fat, high glucose, A1C, insulin. So how do you know this is the cause of your high ferritin levels? So the proper testing is number one. To give you an example, I had a patient come in recently who complained of fatigue, digestive symptoms, diarrhea, gas, abdominal pain, insomnia, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, frequent urinary tract infections, the list went on and on. One of the tests is comprehensive health panel we do. You want to check at a minimum besides ferritin, iron, TIBC, percent saturation. Then you have CBC, chemistry panel, CRP for inflammation, GGT, LDH, lipids, TSH, free T3, free T4, uric acid, insulin, very important, insulin, A1C, and then preferably DHEA, cortisol, B12, folic acid, vitamin D, and hormones, testosterone, estrogen, IGF-1. So his results showed besides high ferritin at 512, it showed high insulin. It was 24.2. That's within the normal range of 2 to 24.5. But 24.2, it's just way too high. Optimal insulin, 2 to 4. His glucose and A1C were normal. However, his insulin was very high, indicating insulin resistance. And he also had high inflammation. He was anemic. So yes, he had high ferritin and he was anemic, low hemoglobin, low red blood count, many other positive findings as well on that test. And besides that, had certain nutrient deficiencies and toxins had as well under infections. He had yeast overgrowth. He had gut inflammation. He also had leaky gut as well as hormonal imbalance, low DHEA, testosterone, and food reactions. Besides gluten sensitivity and celiac genetics, he had other food sensitivities as well. So the treatment to get this cleared up, so when you have insulin resistance, it's quite simple. Between diet and supplements, the diet is uh, he's an anti-inflammatory diet. It's a diet I've developed over the last 37 years of practice. And it's, I call it the free diet because it's free of not only gluten, but gluten grains, sugar yeast, dairy eggs, soy legumes, nightshades, processed foods, all those foods most commonly responsible for inflammation, digestive, and other chronic health issues. It consists of, for breakfast, a smoothie with high in protein, essential fats, fruits and vegetables, fiber, and lunch and dinner, protein, meat, chicken, fish, plenty of vegetables, a lot of healthy fats, and avoiding snacks in between meals. I'll put a link to the free diet phase one food chart below so you can see what that looks like. And supplements, the basic fun functional five, I call it, which is multi -fischial vitamin D, probiotic, magnesium. And when someone has insulin resistance issues, I use a product called cardiometabolics to help support healthy blood sugar regulation, and curcumin, liver support, vitamin C, digestive support supplements for him, and some other nutrients that he was below optimal or deficient in as well. So after one month when he came in, follow-up, 
testing indicated his ferritin dropped from 512 to 316, so almost 40% reduction in one month. And his insulin dropped 24 to 5, so over 75% reduction in four weeks. Decrease in uric acid, his kidney function and liver function numbers improved to normal. His inflammatory marker, CRP, went down 65% to optimal levels. He was no longer anemic after four weeks. Uh, his platelets went down to normal. His ANA, which is an autoimmune marker, normal after four weeks. Hashimoto's thyroid antibodies improved. His DHEA went up dramatically to normal levels. And his cortisol decreased the no normal range. And his testosterone went up over 50%, 164 points to normal level. And that includes his PSA went down at the same time to optimal level. And the best part was he was feeling more energy, sleeping through the night, got off his sleeping pills. He dropped 17 pounds in four weeks. His pain, his back pain, headaches, joint pain, all improved dramatically. And he was just feeling so much better. So the number one thing for high ferritin, you want to find out what is causing it. Get the proper testing because if you find out the underlying root cause, then you could be provided the right solutions. And when you do this, I believe most anyone can get better. So thanks for joining me today. If you'd like a complimentary copy of the Free Diet Phase 1 food chart, I'll put a link below for you. And feel free to like and subscribe to my channel. And I look forward to seeing you next time.